Okay, so this is a review, possibly the first review, a real review of the new Odyssey LCD i3 that looks remarkably like that. It is an in-ear headphone, but a hugely different in-ear headphone from all the other in-ear headphones pretty much on the planet, at least others that haven't copied <laughs> Odyssey's approach to how to design an in-ear headphone because it is a planar magnetic headphone as all Odyssey headphones are. Before we go any further, I'm gonna do a quick music documentary review at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. But this puppy comes with uh, a bunch of uh, very interesting features. First, it comes with three sets of cables. There's a standard headphone cable with a 3.5 millimeter plug. That's the first one. The second one is what Odyssey calls the Cypher cable, which has a lightning connector, meaning it's used exclusively for iPhones or Apple products that have lightning connectors. And it also has a built-in DAC. So that's a, a difference with a distinction that you can upgrade the sound of your phone by using the DAC that's in line rather than carrying a, around a bulky separate DAC, right? And the third one was this kind of a surprise to me is a Bluetooth cable. So it's sort of a dongle that goes around your neck and you can have Bluetooth 5.0 on your full range planar magnetic Odyssey in-ear headphone. That's pretty cool. Uh, tech details, well, it's a very large driver compared to most, what you get in most in-ear headphones. Most in-ear headphones with dynamic driver, the biggest ones are 10 millimeters or 12. This one is 30 millimeter planar magnetic. So that's, it's huge actually. That's why it can't go in your ear. That's why it sits outside of your kind of like an on-ear headphone. But with these, uh, let's say nozzles, so to speak, they go in your ear canal. So it's an in-ear headphone that kind of works like an on-ear headphone. Uh, the other big, big difference compared to just about all in-ear headphones is that this one, the i3, like the iSign 20 and 10 and LCD i4, they're all open back headphones. So you hear the world around you. They won't do a thing to hush or isolate you. So if you need a phone for traveling on planes, trains, uh, et cetera, et cetera, this is probably not gonna be the best choice. This is basically gonna work in quiet environments. It's gonna shine in quiet settings when you're not battling the outside world. Uh, so most in-ear headphones have some degree of isolation from the outside world. This one has zilch. I did mention the price, right? It's $899, but includes all those features and more. Oh, by the way, one of the things that I like is these new ear hooks. This is what holds the headphone onto your ear. And these are, have, a, have an angle to them now that the original ear hooks didn't have. So they're more comfortable. I find these headphones comfortable. Not everybody does in the old version or the new version, but anybody who has the older iSign 1020 or LCD i4 can get these new ear hooks from Odyssey. It's on their website. Uh, these in-ear headphones have a sound more akin to the sound you get from an electrostatic. It's so pure, it's so transparent. It's hyper clear. And that is certainly the case with the i3. So I was playing this Stuart Copeland soundtrack to Francis Ford Coppola's film called Rumblefish. And Stuart's um, score has a lot of percussion in it, a lot of tinkly bells and little things that are being hit and stuff. And the detail, the clarity is just startling coming off the i3 huge, amazing. And in contrast to that, I played uh, Wendy Carlos's score for uh, Stanley Kubrick's film, The Shining. And that one has this deep organ that just goes down to the center of the earth. These headphones do deep, deep, deep bass with such precision and definition, truly extraordinary. So just quickly, I did spend some time comparing the i3 to the model that replaces the iSign 20. And they sound kind of the same, really, which is really good. But if you already have an iSign 20, there's no need to upgrade sound close. I, 
I don't know, I can't even begin to describe how they sound different, but close enough for, for, for me, that's for sure. I also spent some time comparing the i3 against two more, far more conventional headphones. The first one would be this one here. This is a Bayer Dynamic Zalento uh, in-ear headphone. It's really tiny. Uh, it doesn't sound tiny. It has a really big, warm, hearted sound. It's, it's a beautiful sounding, if overly rich, headphone. It has Tesla technology that Bayer's famous for. A really stunning headphone, but it pales compared to the i3. The i3 is just so much more dynamically alive, transient response, air, and of course openness because the i3 has this gigantic soundstage, just beautifully focused soundstage, and the Zalento uh, doesn't. It's more in your head. It's not completely stuck inside your head, but it's far more, well, it's, it's more narrow than the i3. So then I compared the i3 against these. These are my long-term reference headphones. These are Jerry Harvey JH13 Freak Phase. These are custom molded to my very own ears. And yes, they have tremendously better isolation from external noise. And they are more alive, more dynamic, more spacious than the biodynamic Zalentos, but didn't hold a candle to the i3. The i3s, you know, that's the thing. They're just so free sounding. They're just so unheadphone like. First of all, they're outside of your head. It's not like they sound like speakers where the sound is over there. That they're not going to do. But in terms of creating this bubble of sound around your head with really crisp precision and transience on pianos and drums and Percussion is just remarkable. And these, as good as they are, they sound really kind of tapped down, softer, and less, less vivid, less tactile, less alive than the LCD i3. I admit it, I've been hung up on percussion and drums lately. And I was playing this Ola Tunji record that I discovered when I was a little kid. It's called Drums of Passion. It was recorded in New York City in 1959. And it's incredible. It's amazing that something that old could sound that good. And over the i3, it was incredible. Incredible that it had that tactile, real drums chanting. In the further back, it was extraordinary. The i3 is just now that kind of stuff. Then to finish up with this drum thing I'm going through, I played this John Mueller, Dwayne Petra, uh, recording that it's just really symbols and the touch, the tactile, the shimmering metallic quality of the symbols over the i3 was, again, it just left all the others in the dust. There really is no comparison. If you want to hear head sounds from headphones you've never heard before, any of the iSign headphones or the LCD i3 or i4 headphones will take you there. I guarantee it. They're all made in the USA in California, actually, except this lower price I sign, which I'll put up on the screen to refer to it. But uh, this, uh, this lack of isolation from the outside world might be a deal breaker for a lot of you guys. So uh, it's a rave review, and uh, I, can't, I, can't, uh, I can't stop myself from talking about how incredible this headphone is because, again, there's nothing else really like it. Okay, so let's move on to the music documentary film review, and it's for this film. Blue Note, Beyond the Notes. It, yes, it is about Blue Note Records. The company was founded in 1939 by two German Jews, and they had a passion, a true love for jazz. They started this label. They didn't make any money from it for a long time, or probably any money from it over the long run even, but it was truly a, a passion-driven enterprise, and they picked the best, the best people that were around, starting with Thelonious Monk and John Coltrane and Miles Davis, and uh, just the list goes on and on. But you know the thing is, if you're into jazz, you probably are very already familiar with the history of Blue Note and all their great artists and great recordings, all of which were done by the legendary Rudy Van Gelder, the engineer responsible for, for not all, but most of them. And uh, 
he's in this film as well. He has a, a nice things to say, interesting things to say. I don't think I mentioned the, the two founders' names, Alfred Lyon and Francis Wolfe. And Francis was a photographer, and he took incredible, iconic pictures of the, the, the artists that were working on his labels, which graced the covers of these albums. And the, um, the graphic design is incredible. I mean, remember, it's a tiny, independent label. It's not a giant corporation. No, they're a little label, struggling. And none of these records, even at their peak, sold in numbers like pop records do. It wasn't, it wasn't about making money. It was about presenting and preserving this art form. That's the history part. But what makes this, this documentary so uh, worth your while is how it connects the dots and brings us up to the present with, um, with hip hop, right? Because it is a straight line. And there's some young guys in the movie who record for Blue Note. So there's a lot of old music in the movie. And by the way, the sound of it, the old stuff and the new stuff is really, really good. Superb. I was shocked at, the, at what they did to these, to these recordings because they just I know them so well and I'm listening to them thinking, wow, that sounds fantastic. And the look of the movie, the, the, the cinematography is fantastic. But the thing that makes it a must-see movie is how it brings it up to the present with hip-hop. And so there's uh, Robert Glasper, who I've, I've heard his records on Blue Note over the last few years. I really like him. And this other guy that I never heard of, Terrence Martin, is in it. And of course, Nora Jones, the mega, mega, mega star, has been on Blue Note since the beginning of her incredible career rise. So she's there. and. Um, but it's this, it's this hip hop connection that really got to me because it is, it does come out of jazz and they tell you how they did it in ways, that, in words that I can't really <laughs> use because I'm not, I don't have it in my blood, but they do. So sure, if you're a, an old guy who's really into jazz, this, this film is for you. If you're a young guy and you're really into jazz, this film is for you. But what makes it compelling is this, this connecting the dots to the present with hip hop. And that is amazing. So if you're young and you want to get into jazz, this film could help make, make sense of it all for you. And I think that's huge. I think that's an incredible achievement. So uh, it's definitely worth your time. Look for it. I, I have it here on Blu-ray. I think it's also on DVD, and I'm sure it's streamed in a million different places. Blue Note Records, Beyond the Notes, highly, highly, highly recommended. This brings us to the end of this exciting chapter of the Audiophiliac Daily Show, coming to you six or seven days a week, uh, for the time being at least. And um, if you dig it, please subscribe. Hit that little button down there. Subscribe when you subscribe. And when you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you'll be aware of every thrilling new episode. If you like this thing, uh, also give it a thumbs up from time to time and share these amazing episodes, the ones that at least you think are amazing, with your audio pals or just music pals. And um, you can follow me on Twitter at Man. And if you gotten this far, yeah, check out the Patreon at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.